Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome back to the Spider Ruins. After reading the comments, it seems like the ruins themselves are definitely the more popular area for us to build the brand new base in, as opposed to the bridge. But don't worry, I will be using the bridge for something else in the future. But today, we're starting construction of our fortress within the ruins. Now, the ruins are already kind of fortified. The walls here can obviously trap techs, as you can see. There's a tech just outside here, which obviously can't enter, but that's not really good enough when there's a huge hole at the front. At the moment, any tech can just wander in and start to destroy us. So today, we're building ourselves a door. It's going to be heavily armoured, it will have shields, repair bubbles, and even the ability to make its own energy. But the main purpose, of course, is it needs to be able to open and close. So what I'm thinking is we're going to have two rotating anchors, one here, one here. So two separate techs, which are a mirror of each other. We can then manually control them to open them and manually control them to close them. And thus we can enter, but nothing else can. And I think this is going to work out okay. Now, the one problem is we don't really have the items for this. We have a lot of the regular blocks. We have a lot of the shields but we don't have two rotating anchors of the same type. Obviously a problem. Now eventually, I want this entire area to be able to fabricate everything we need, to be able to scrap everything, and I want defense turrets absolutely everywhere. I want this to be a completely self-sustaining, very, very scary fortress. But for now, we are going to have to go back to the salt flats just to make a few items and then head on back here. So we will be back soon, but for now, we're heading back out and getting the stuff made. Which actually begs the question, how are we ever going to move all of those components over here in the future? Since you can't store components in the SCU, and you can't compact them into regular items. We're going to have to make a new cargo plane. But that's for the future. Lots of things we need to do today, we're just building some doors. Which doesn't sound very cool, but honestly, I'm really looking forward to this. As I slowly meander back, I mean, I could be flying, but I just prefer using the hover, which of the anchors are we even going to use, and what style are we going to make it? I think I'm going to stay away from Better Future for this one, just because I've used Better Future for way too much stuff recently. So I'm thinking either Geocorp or Hawkeye. Or perhaps a combo of the two. I actually find they do mix really well. Especially with all the bumpers. Yeah, I'm thinking probably... Geocorp for the main body, and then Hawkeye for all of the armoured sections. I think that would look really, really nice, especially with loads of bumpers around the edge. Either way, just in case, we're going to be making the anchors from everything possible. So we're going to have anchors from GSO, from Geocorp, and from Hawkeye. And we should definitely have all the items we need, although not straight away. We can always just scrap stuff. We have loads of stuff to scrap. I really wish you could mirror this armor plate, because I really love this one. The notch armor plate looks amazing, but you can't mirror it perfectly, so... Can't really use that. We could use some of the grounding armor around the edges to give it a bit more depth, which would be nice. But we're definitely going to use loads of the armor plate. And thankfully, this uses components, which we have loads of, so... Let's make 20 of that to go with everything else. Let's make sure we have enough bumpers. Then we could go back and figure out what we need from there. A little while later and we are back. Honestly, I'm also really looking forward to doing a new crafting system in here. Because the old one, although it works and it's actually quite space efficient for what I want it to do. Because it wants to do everything. Is really, really slow. So, I can move these later on if they don't line up exactly as I want them to. Because I already think I have misplaced one. But, let's just begin by adding a bottom section. So, what I want to do is have a Geocorp main body, but then highlights using Hawkeye to make it look a little bit more 3D, otherwise it'll be really boring. Then I might add some weaponry to it, I'm not quite sure. I'm definitely going to add a turret here and a turret here, so should the door even have weaponry? I don't think so, I think it would look better if it was just pure solid health. Really, really difficult to get through. So, let's quickly place down some blocks and see if we can line these up better. A little while later, and we are back. So, how are we going to do this then? What I think I'm going to do is have a Geocorp main body all the way up, and then use Hawkeye to sort of flesh it out so it's a bit more 3D. Now, I don't want it to go all the way to the top, because I think that would look a bit too busy, but I think I should make it go to this connection here, 
or where this broken section is. If I can line it up with one of those two, I think it will look fine. Oh, that's getting stuck. Okay, for a second there, I thought it wasn't even opening. Let's try that again. Yeah, gonna need to be a bit further away from the rock than that. Nope, and we are completely detached from the original location. Am I gonna have to make this smaller? I might have to make this smaller. Is that okay? What am I clipping on? I can't see what I'm hitting. Yeah, that hitbox is- Oh, I'm hitting the ground! The ground isn't even! That could be a problem. Problem solved. I am a genius. And bat you out of the way. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Okay, we're just gonna have to <laughs> do something weird with that section. Okay, I'm just gonna be doing this for like half an hour, so skip ahead. So it occurs to me, this thing isn't particularly difficult to just ram open. We hit it, and it moves. So, if an enemy does have melee weapons, it'll probably just move the door. So, is there an easy way to kind of add a lock to this thing, so once we're inside, it's safe? I mean, surely, if we just play something like this... Okay, it can't open fully anymore, and that's just two blocks. And we can definitely think of something a little bit more interesting later on. Okay, so for now, though, I've shrunk down the door just so I can focus on this section, and we can complete both of them to the same level. Then I'll go and get more of the building blocks and do more with that later. Still want it to be taller than this. At minimum, it's going to be up to here. But I think going up to here will just make it look a bit weird. Yeah, let's continue with this. So, trying to figure out what we're going to do here. Are we going to go with a more industrial look, like this? Or just a more heavily fortified? And I think I'm going to go with industrial. I love using the piping anyway, so it would be an excuse to use that. So, I'm going to be tearing this apart now, since this is just a test, and redoing it in a similar way. So, we have Geocorp at the bottom, piping, then a fortified section in the middle holding it together, and then more piping and Geocorp at the top. I think I am going to go with the height of this, rather than this, because otherwise it'll be too stretched in my opinion. We'll have to make it thicker, and the problem is that will eventually slow down the anchor as well. At least I think it will. Either way though, I think if we build it too tall, despite the fact it would match better, I just think it would look really weird in terms of the actual design. The other question is, how thick are we even meant to make this wall? We could make it a little bit thicker, but it depends on how tall it goes. And honestly, if we do make it thicker, it would be easier just to build more on the back. Because the easiest way to defend this would just be to have as many of these, the big one, blocks. <laughs> I forgot it was called that. <laughs> it bloody started reading it. Either way, though, these have an insane amount of health. So knocking one down is very, very difficult. Everything else kind of pales in comparison. But I'm okay with this. Not sure. I think I'll do them both like this. Then I'll start building up and do more above it as well. Hmm. Yeah, that way we can just bring this down so we can repeat that pattern. Which is all nice and simple, not too expensive to do as well, so I'm not constructing items for the next half an hour. Put something here to make it a bit more interesting. Put something in the center. Yeah, if we put something in the center, so this bit here is further forward than the rest as well, it'll be quite interesting to look at. And once again, it looks super industrial, which I'm really happy with. Okay. I think this can work. So, let's just make sure we can complete this bottom section on both before the end of this episode. Then we can figure out what else we can do and finish that off next time. Then maybe add some of the defense turrets and such. This is taking a lot longer than it looks, by the way. Super fun, though. So I think I figured out a good pattern uh, that we can replicate to make the entire thing a little bit taller, but I have run out of everything I need to make said pattern. So, time to make way more things. Starting with, weirdly, these, which I never seem to use. The challenge of this playthrough course has been I'm simply not allowed to use money to purchase items, with the exception of experimental items which are just insanely rare, to the point where I just can't use them in the playthrough even if I had hours and hours and hours to try and farm those items. This is great, it means that everything we're currently using we are essentially using from the corpses of our enemies, which is hilarious and adds an extra challenge to the game. The problem is in episodes like this, 
everything takes a lot longer. I'm also running out of certain resources already, so I think we will have to end on the bottom half of the doors being finished, so it's functionally complete as a proof of concept. On the upside, though, the defense turrets actually need a lot less of that stuff, so next episode with the defenses is going to be a lot of fun as well. Okay, I think that's enough for now. We have loads more of the big blocks. We also have some more of the Hawkeye stuff, especially these, which turns out are incredibly expensive. We also have more of the armor plating and loads more of the bumpers. So I think I can finish off what I had set out to do. Okay, I'm not going to bother feeding you anymore. Let's go back. But first, did you know that anti-grav is fun? When it hits. Until then, destroying things is fun. And feeding on its corpse. So let's say this is the halfway point, or perhaps the two-third point, depending on how far I actually want this to be up. So what we could do is what we're doing here, which is make a nice pattern to make it look a bit more ornate. Even just something as simple as that, it instantly makes it look a bit more unified. Then we just keep this as it is. So we have that, that, we build up like this for a second, one more solid section, perhaps to here? Yeah, which is the original idea. I think that's how it's going to work. And then we put something on the top. Some spikes or just something to make it look finished at the top. Okay. Now realising that the simpler patterns do look really nice, I could just have this down here and up here, as in half of it here, half of it here, in addition to the full version there, but this looks better closer up. This looks better further away. But I do like how this is turning out. Looks sturdy, but kind of the style I want, though. I love these lights. I don't love how they appear to be going through solid blocks, though. Or are they? No, they're going through just the armor, because there's a slight gap. Still don't like that. Might place them somewhere else. The gap here actually looks really good. I am surprised by that, but very happy. Naturally, the second I start adding other lights to test them out... The sun comes up, and thus I can't see what they look like. But we can use our imagination and place everything incorrectly. Now, use your imagination to believe I can actually build things with any sort of competency. Just now realising I can't mirror these either. If they're facing the opposite way, then... These have been flipped. Okay, so instead we'll have to use the better future ones, which I don't want to do. I want this one build to have no better future elements, but the solar panels might have to be the exception. There we are, and I've also fixed some asymmetry. So far, I actually really like how this looks. And with these lights here, this should look really nice now when it gets dark again, so I'll test that out obviously fairly soon. Maybe one more layer here, so how about if we add the regular long blocks rather than these really expensive ones, because, you know, they're less expensive. Then we can put the batteries down here and seal them off nice and easily. This thing does need quite a lot of battery storage, it's going to be using up a lot of power. Although eventually, I do want a brand new power spire, which is going to feed everything. I still want everything to be somewhat independent, but with a backup. Oh, now I've said that, actually, how awesome would it be in the very centre of this to have a power spire, which is just solar panels, perhaps, the dynamo generators with a moving secondary tech, and that feeds everything. So it's constantly power arcing from the centre. Oh no, that sounds awesome, <laughs> but it's so much more work, but it sounds awesome. Okay, for now, we'll leave these here. Ooh, wow, that was weird. But we'll move all of these away once I build the spire. Ahem, ahem, there we go. Now I'm less blind. That's useful. Ignore the placeholder shields and such. I was just trying to space things out. And now, I've got a new idea. If we place a block like this here and perhaps one here, 
when we close both doors, as long as we do it in the correct order, there we go, they'll stick together, and that looks nice and neat. Although I still think this one needs to be moved a little bit further forwards. I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out. Well, it's no longer mirrored, but this is the easiest way to do it. So we have multiple connection points there. So as long as we open them in the correct order, then close this one first. Then this one. And there we are. It actually pushes this one a little bit further ahead, and they're now lined up. Nice and neatly, rather than having to micromanage every little bit of movement. Actually, I'm wondering, if we try and close this one first, will it push this one out of the way? Not quite enough. But at least it starts it moving. Perfect. Look at that. Originally, I wasn't going to connect the Hawkeye stuff together, but actually, that looks really nice. So it looks like two separate pieces. And that is definitely tall enough. Will this one be green? Okay, that's pretty cool. Green and red. Probably just should go with one, though, otherwise it'll be a bit too obvious. Or maybe just two, but close to each other. Yeah, I like that. Don't like the top section yet. Obviously, I've got no patterning here, but just this flat section needs to be something there. But other than that, that looks really good, actually. Yeah, I am really happy with that. It's simple, but nice. Just making sure these things can actually still open. Okay. And it looks like they open pretty evenly. Not quite. But that should be fine. Um, actually, no. This one opens more than that one, which will really annoy me. So what I need to do is make sure the stoppers are in place in the correct position. So that when they stop, they stop at the same angle. Because, yeah, that's just going to annoy me. But that will happen at the very, very end. For now, let's just do this. There we are. And push that one a little bit further forward. Excellent. Just need more stuff here to make it pop a little bit more, because at the moment it blends too well. Well, that is closer. Now, the thing is, I have ran out of the shields, so what I need to do is go and make even more stuff, and then this will be pretty much finished, except for I need to neaten up the back as well, which is going to be incredibly boring. So I think I'm going to call the episode here, and I'm going to do a load of background work, finishing off the back section, perhaps adding a small pattern here and here. Not too sure about that just yet, as it is quite nice having at least a few blank areas, but ultimately, I really love the idea of this door. And to add a locking mechanism, all we need to do is add any blocks to the back. Once we're inside, it takes only a few seconds, and I can't think of an easier way. Oh, actually, no, of course I can think of an easier way. All we need to do is add... Where are you? The fixed anchor. Now, will this mess everything up? No, it won't. You add the fixed anchors, now they can't move at all. You remove the fixed anchors, and they can move. Yep, that is so much easier. Why did I not think of that earlier? Because I'm a dum-dum. Nice and simple. And there's even space for it. There we go, it's perfect. Can't move all. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff. Helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that TerraTech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, I will have completely finished off the door, and we're either going to be working on the new and improved Power Spire, or we're going to be adding some defences around the outskirts of these walls which I'm hoping we can build on nice and easily. If not, it's going to be a problem. Maybe we'll use sky anchors and flying defences, but I want this thing to look properly fortified. I think the door is a good start. So, thank you for watching, and goodbye. Also, 
Any name suggestions for the fortress? More than welcome.